Hello, very wonderful Monday night, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, welcome to our Dear Act Now live show uh, happening every Monday night at 9 o'clock. I'm the host of today's show. My name is Desmond, and it's a pleasure to meet all of you, including our supporters and also for those who are new here. So if you have you guys got your dinner, if you haven't, make sure to grab your dinner plate and stay tuned because currently we are having our Dear Act Now live show, which revolves around uh, the topics of mental health, where we provide a platform to listen to different stories and letters, uh, regardless it being uh, marriage problem, uh, relationship issues, academic stress, career prospect, and many other issues that might have been troubling you, all of the audiences out there. We also have our registered clinical psychologist uh, with years of experience to be here tonight, uh, live on live, uh, to consult them on the spot while we listen to two different stories uh, from two different uh, writers for their uh, for the clinical psychologist professional advices. So if you're also interested in the Mandarin or the Basel Malaysia version of the Act Now Live Show, the Mandarin one will actually be taking place every Wednesday um, at night on the same platform right here. And as for the Basel Malaysia version, it will be happening uh, every Thursday at the same time and also the same platform right here at Facebook uh, Facebook page, the Act, uh, Act Now Trooper. Right, so with that being said, if you have any issues or concerns that uh, probably have been um, you know, disturbing you for a while or you have some, some sort of a traumatic past that you can't seem to get over, well, feel free to drop us an email and share with us your story and at dialectnow.com and we will see what we can do about it. All right, and don't worry because your details and privacy will also be uh, well protected because you will be anonymous. And also, if you find this helpful or interesting, feel free to like, or leave a comment telling us your opinion or asking any questions that you wish to and share it with people around you, of course, which will be very great helpful to us. Um, they might be facing the same problem and maybe this little sharing session um, will be able to provide <clears throat> some sort of a, a help to those of you who are uh, whatever that you're dealing with. All right, so thank you so much in advance for that. So tonight, the professional clinical psychologist who will be on our live show tonight will be Miss Teo Rui. All right, so Thrive Well, um, she says it's from Thrive Well. So if you're wondering what Thrive Well is, it is a community uh, mental health social enterprise with a mission to expand uh, trauma-informed mental health services to individuals, uh, communities, and organizations. Okay, and before we bring uh, Miss Teo Rui in, I would first like to first share and explain um, what is ACT NOW and what kind of a uh, function uh, does it possess? So basically, if you have not downloaded your ACT NOW app yet, you are missing out on this absolutely amazing, uh, super user-friendly app where you can report any sort of community issues on the app itself. So you can download it on your phone. And if you happen to see, I don't know, like the the road, the lights by the roadside that has been uh, broken down for a little while and it's been getting a little dark, you can always, always uh, take a picture of it and we will highlight it to the local councils or the relevant authorities to have the issues resolved as soon as possible. And other issues such as an abandoned car or a pile of garbages that no one has been dealing with, well, Act Now can solve it all for you. So let's all do a part in improving our beloved neighborhood and this country as a whole together with Act Now Community Mobile App. Besides, Act Now also has a plenty of uh, absolutely uh, interesting show where one of it, the recently one, would be our YB Sahari. All right, so if you aspire to be an MP or an Arden, well, you are more than welcome, absolutely welcome to join our show and tell us your desire on improving your constitution. All right, so it is open for participation to all citizens of Malaysia, uh, regardless of your age, your beliefs, your race, or with or without supporting any political parties, it doesn't matter. All right, so um, in the midst of the recent elections and the voting things, so this program is dedicated to any video who would like to improve their community or the constitution that they would like to contest for. So on this show, we will not be discussing anything related to political issues just community issues. So get on board and join us right now. And the show will be conducted on the Act Now Trooper Facebook page in both English and Malay at 12 p.m. on every Monday. So PM us now and we'll be in touch with you to arrange for you to be on our show. All right, let's not wait any longer. A round of applause for our guest of tonight, our registered clinical psychologist, Ms. Rui. How's it Hi, going? Everyone. Hi, Desmond. Hello. How have you been? Is everything great so far? 
yep, everything is fine from my side. Um, uh, so, <laughs> right, so, so for those who are new to uh, Ms. Uh, Ruyi, she's actually a registered clinical psychologist. Uh, how, how many years have you been in this line of work? Right. Or maybe uh, do, a, do a brief introduction of what you do and what yes. is your, I don't know, like your specific area of uh, work. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, hi everyone. I'm Rui, I'm a registered clinical psychologist. So, besides conducting, you know, psychological assessment as well as um, conducting psychotherapy sessions, yeah, uh, what I've been doing more these two years would be actually workshops, webinars, as well as support groups due to, you know, the increase of mental health awareness during the pandemic. So, yeah, uh, that's what I've been doing for these past two years, mainly, um, hopefully that, you know, we can uh, increase more about mental health awareness and telling people that it's okay to, you know, mm -hmm. share about our um you know not so good well-being as well as mental health issues so yeah mm, i see i see so I, I believe in order to raise the awareness on the <clears throat> mental health issues uh, amongst mm -hmm. our society i believe uh we will definitely need to also have more people getting in um, this line of work and this field yes. in particular mm. so what would be the i don't know the three criteria for those who are interested in, you know, becoming a registered clinical psychologist or therapist or counselor, mm. what do you think would be the three main criteria for that? Right. Um, I guess because our work do, you know, uh, require us to work a lot with human <laughs> being, mm -hmm. basically, right? So uh, we do need to uh, have um, empathy in the sense that we need to kind of like think from others' perspective instead of, mm -hmm. you know, um, making judgment pretty soon or pretty fast. Even if we do make judgment, we need to uh, be aware of it. So awareness is another key. So I guess would be, you know, empathy, awareness, as well as mm -hmm. I think perhaps might need a little bit of uh, resilient in the sense that resilient, oh. I would say, because we mm -hmm. need to bounce back, right? Sometimes, you know, um, there are... Um, um, more uh, difficult cases and and it might affect us as well so we need to be resilient in the sense that we know the ways to bounce back so i think resilient would be another key i think yeah but that's uh, based on my mm -hmm. personal view <laughs> i see yes in accordance to the popular belief is it true that um register i mean the psychologists they themselves don't have any mental issues in order to be one Mm, that's a very right. controversial question <laughs> yeah right i mm -hmm. guess because you know we are human beings we are not mm -hmm. you know um we do have flaw we are not flawless right and at yeah. times our mood will go ups and downs as well and you know sometimes if we it heats and especially when there's you know uh, stresses or stressful life events we are human beings as well we might get affected as well um, so we might have, you know, poor well-being or our, our, you know, um, quality of life will also get affected, right? But mm -hmm. I guess the difference would be because we do learn some skills, right? We do learn some skills to uh, helping us to manage our emotions better. So in a way, mm -hmm. we do know how to use these skills to help us to bounce back or regulate it better. So perhaps that's the difference. So, you know, once people come into a session, it's not about, uh -huh. it's not about labeling you or so, but it's more about, you know, helping you to learn some skills so that it could help you to regulate your emotion, your mood, um, so that you can bounce back as well, instead of going down the spiral into the negative um, pit hole. Yeah. I see, and, and I, I truly believe that um, having to go through you, to go through some traumatic experience yourself, um, having the first-hand experience, it would be very valuable to your uh, contribution when it comes to helping your client out or your patient out as well. All right, so um, well, just a quick brief as to what is going to happen tonight, where we will be listening to two different letters from two different writers. And once again, thank you so much for writing in, and we believe it uh, must not be easy at all to try to reach out and actually drop us an email to share a story but don't worry once again all your details and your privacy will be protected so the first letter um we'll be listening to uh, mr timothy and he is from arosta 
at now. My name is Timothy and I am from our set. I am 29 years old and just a couple of years ago, I have kickstarted my career at an advertising and marketing agency. I truly enjoy my job and I flourished at getting all the tasks done in a perfect manner. And due to that, my superior wanted me to handle a department on my own. But the precondition is that I will have to move to Kuala Lumpur. This should never be an issue until the COVID-19 pandemic since 2020. I am very traumatized by the sickness and side effects of COVID-19 and Kuala Lumpur. Being a city with crowds everywhere, I am very afraid of being tested positive again and having to go through the suffers. I am very torn. I want my career to move forward and this Kuala Lumpur opportunity comes once in a lifetime. But I cannot get over the pain and anxiety which COVID-19 had caused me. What should I do? Dear Act Now. All right, once again, um, thank you so much, Timothy, for writing in, where a young gentleman who has kickstarted his career at an advertising agency um, actually struck a really, really good opportunity in order to uh, move forward in terms of his career prospect in the KL, the city of dream, where people say where all your uh, empire can be built right there. And a lot of people definitely, I mean, especially for the small towns, they don't know how difficult it is to uh, actually have an opportunity to uh, move forward with their career in KL. So, um, however, he seems to have an issue where we found out that he had been tested positive, COVID positive before. And he was very, very traumatized, terrified by the side effects and didn't want to test, get tested positive again. So this actually had sort of stunted his um, career where he was actually very, very excited about this uh, habit, handling his own department, this and so. So what should he do? I mean, um, Ms. Ruyi, were you able to tell me as in, uh, how does one actually overcome this fear? And what is it exactly, um, what is exactly this fear called? Right, right. Right. Um, first of all, I want to thank Timothy for sharing this with, with us. And I believe that, you know, going through um, that is really not easy. Like you, you, you have experienced the symptoms of um, COVID-19, right? And, and I believe that it's really um, unpleasant that caused you mm-hmm. to afraid or fear to get effect, um, um, tested again. Yeah. So, um, and that's what we call anxiety, right? Because when we associate, you know, the unpleasantness and we think that, you know, we are afraid of this unpleasantness, then we might feel nervous or afraid of this. And that will actually really affect us because um, we will be thinking or predicting things will go badly. What if, what if, you know, we will keep thinking if, what if I... I get tested again and I need to go through all this again. Yeah. Yeah. And and when we have this kind of thinking, definitely it activated the fight, flight or freeze response because we see this as a threat. The unpleasantness is the threat. Yeah. Yeah. So it activated the fight, flight or freeze response. Either we fight it or we run away from it or we just freeze. We don't know what to do. Right. Uh And... And for Timothy cases, we can see that most likely he's either at the flight or the freeze, which is avoided, yeah, or not knowing what to do, lost, stop, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and when we avoid, actually, you know, when we avoid things, and things doesn't happen badly, right? Because we thought that because I avoid this, things doesn't happen badly, so I should continue with this avoidance, and that's when anxiety cycle continues because we feel anxious that's why we try to avoid from it and that's relieve our short-term anxiety and then we continue but in the long run we will still feel fear of this Mm -hmm. um, situation so yeah um, that's how is it similar is it similar to is it similar to taking panadols um, in order, in, instead of letting your immune system to fight the sickness, like being overly reliant on the Panadol or any sort of medicine, mm. is it like this avoidance? Mm. 
Mm. So, so sometimes we know it as safety behavior. If it's taking something, <clears throat> avoiding is just not okay. doing anything. You just avoid from the situation, yeah, or mm -hmm. avoid from the object that you are fear of. But taking Panadols, it's more like safety behavior because you thought that once I take it, I will be safe. Uh, so that's another another uh, topic of it. But if we just not doing anything, but just avoid the situation, then it will just be avoidance. Mm, and sometimes avoidance can be tied <coughs> with safety behavior as well. Mm, yeah. Now that we have diagnosed um, his problem, which is uh, no. avoidance. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah, you say. Oh, now that you say, now that we are diagnosing, I, I would rather say identifying. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Not that because you were saying that he actually has this uh, anxiety uh, and he's right. being very anxious about it and he's avoiding. Right. So mm -hmm. what suggestion or, you know, like solutions do you have for him to um, at least attempt to overcome this so that he doesn't Correct. miss this once in a lifetime opportunity? Mm, because I can really see that Timothy do have, you know, uh, she, he really wants to get this opportunity from, from his letter. Yeah. I can see that he has the passion of doing this, but the fear as well as his anxiety has been stopping him, right? So um, first of all, I want to let, you know, Timothy knows that um, we need to try to kind of like identify our negative thinking as well. Because uh, I'm not too sure, but I'm hypothesizing that perhaps you might have some catastrophizing thinking. Catastrophizing thinking meaning that you are predicting things will turn out badly. Yeah, especially oh. thinking that once I come to KL, things will turn out badly because you know it's bigger. The chances is higher that I might get uh, tested as positive again. Right. So mm -hmm. we need to identify this kind of thinking first, knowing it be aware of it does help us, yeah? Because once we identify it, it does help us to think that, you know, is it true? Is it important and is it helpful for us? And we can see that actually usually it's it's not very helpful, this kind of thinking, right? Because it has right. hindered him from doing things that he really wanted. And we might also want to think that, you know, um, we, we really don't know when will the pandemic ends, actually, because currently right. we are in this endemic phase. We need to live right. with it, right? Yes. We really need to live it with, with it already, no matter what, whether you are in police, mm -hmm. Qatar, or KL, right? right. So mm -hmm. we need to remind us, what's our locus of control? Locus of control means what can we control? right that's internal and external internal are the one mm -hmm. that we can control what we can control perhaps would be you know how we perceive uh, it yes all the procedures mm -hmm. right like washing hands uh wearing masks or um when you're not at the office try not to go out that's fine that is under your control or within your control that's something that you can control right but things that cannot be controlled would be the pandemic actually we can't really control the pandemic and we are not sure when will it end actually right mm -hmm. but if this is something that you really wanted the career then you need to always try to look at your locus on of control especially the internal one yeah and be aware of it so you you focus on the internal locus of control instead of external locus of control because when we focus too much on the external locus of control, it just stops us from doing a lot of things. Yeah, and it's not mm. helpful, right? Right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, true. So, if you have, if you got to wait out for the pandemic to be done, then it will probably take, like, I don't know, so many years. I yes. mean, eventually this will be just be treated as a normal flu and fever where, mm. right. Mm -hmm. mm. Then you were saying? Um, Right. And and I guess if, you know, um, Timothy would feel uh, slightly better if, if, if he thinks that, you know, asking more from the um, company sites about their SOPs, you know, how do they protect their employees, if that makes him feel more comfortable knowing this, mm -hmm. then he could also have a conversation with the company Sorry. about Yes, the superior about what have they been doing in taking care of the employees' um, health, 
right? Because if this is his concern, I think this could be helpful as well. And of course, when we talk about anxiety, besides our thinking, most of the time, it does affect our physiological responses. Like we might feel, mm -hmm. you know, um, heart palpitation, you know, um, sweat on the palms, you know, cold feet, or, or what else, like dizzy, you feel nauseous, all these might happen when we are very anxious. Yeah? Yes. yes. So what we could do with these symptoms, yeah, these physiological uh, symptoms would be very importantly, we need to learn some relaxation skills. Yeah. So when we talk about relaxation skills, of course, there are tons, but um, again, I would like to emphasize the easiest one would be deep breathing. Deep breathing is always mm -hmm. the easiest one because we can do it whenever we are, right? So deep breathing, I usually would say that uh, we breathe in four seconds and out for six seconds. So we want to breathe out slower compared to breathing, yeah? Because um, when we are in this fight, flight or freeze mode, actually, um, you know, we... It, it palpitates and it goes so fast and we couldn't really get the oxygen sometimes because it's too fast, mm. right? So we need to make it slow so that we can get the oxygen again, yeah? So I would suggest four seconds for breathing, like breathing, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. And that's my way because there's tons of different deep breathing skills um, that, you know, like, but I, I prefer four, six because for me, myself, I think it's it's not so long because I think there's oh, seven, seven, so it applies seven, to seven, different seven. people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you can you can find the one that suits you the most. Suits yeah, because most. I think there's seven, seven, eight or something, but I, I personally find it too long. Yeah, I prefer not so long <laughs> because it's, it's hard to breathe when it's too long. So four, six for me, it's nice. So try it, experiment yourself. So that's one, right? The other one um, would be progressive muscle relaxation. So progressive muscle relaxation would then be, uh, Timothy could try to tense part of his muscle and then relax it. And it always goes from the top of our body until the bottom of our body. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit hard for me to explain how do we do it from each muscle, but you can um, search through YouTube. There's also tons of uh, materials or videos about it. So it's known as progressive muscle relaxation. So it tends each part of our muscle from, you know, like um, eyebrows. So it will ask you to, you know, raise your high eyebrow as high as you can and then relax. And then maybe squeeze your eyes as, you know, as, as tight as you can and then relax. Mm -hmm. So why are we doing this is because when we are anxious, again, the fight, flight and freeze response is being activated. So when it's activated, adrenaline is, you know, um, increasing. We, uh, the body release the adrenaline and that's when we need fight or flight. And you, you realize when I say fight or flight, our body is tensing, mm -hmm. isn't it, Desmond? Yeah? Right, right, so right. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why we want to train or reframe our brain to say when it's tense, we need to learn to relax. That's why that's how progressive muscle relaxation works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of, mm -hmm. yes. So so that's another way. And and something very, very simple would be helpful as well, like grounding, which means that we're using our five senses to remind us that we are on the ground, yeah? We are at this space. Instead of focusing too much on our physiological symptoms, we can use our five mm -hmm. senses to be aware that we are still at this space. Something very simple would be just, you know, press your legs very hard on the ground and you can feel that you are on the ground. That would be something very, mm -hmm. very simple. But some people would like okay. different things, mm -hmm. you know, like some people would like to see things through their eyes. Then they can choose to see something that relax them or just five, five things to look around. Yeah. So basically, we're using our senses 
to stay on the ground or listening, you know, we listen, what can I listen now? Oh, I listen to, you know, I can listen my fan or maybe, um, you know, the birds chirping. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. So basically using our five senses to help us to focus on the present. Because when we, uh, but I'm not too sure whether Desmond, you notice or not, because when we talk about anxiety, usually mm -hmm. we are looking at the future. We are worrying about the future. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. We yeah? are anxious about the future. Correct. Yeah. Because it's uncertain. But that's not very helpful when, because that's out of our control. That's, you know, external locus of control. We can't control that. Mm -hmm. So what would be helpful is actually focus back on the present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I really hope that this would help Timothy, especially looking at your thinking. I think that's very, very important. Realize that, you know, there's a lot of catastrophizing thinking. And that catastrophizing thinking is the one that stop you from moving forward because avoidance is rewarding. It reward you right. to not feel unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think again, reduce our physiological response by relaxation skills. Try not to um, avoid meanings that we want to eliminate our avoidance behavior. And three would be reframe or aware of our unhelpful thinking. And for Timothy's case, most likely would be catastrophizing thinking because you have associate going to KL might be equals to getting uh, tested with getting COVID. tested for COVID. Yes, COVID. For, for COVID. So yes, you have been mm. associating that. Yeah. Mm. So be aware of that. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, those are some really, really uh, helpful insights and also a uh, suggestion as to how uh, Timothy can relieve his anxiety. And also, we believe that even if you do not choose, I mean, my, my personal belief is that even if you choose not to go this time, um, this fear of COVID should not keep uh, hanging around your neck like that. So I would say my, my personal opinion is that maybe Timothy should just go for it and take this as an opportunity to overcome um, this inner battle that we have been having for a while. At least make it work, like, you know, this worth it, that it is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. like it's, been, it's been nice avoiding, of course, but now that it is mm -hmm. actually risking and threatening your career prospect, so why not take it as a motivation to actually beat, beat the devil itself? But, so I think right. I also have a question. Um, the last one for Timothy, mm. where um, let's say if he doesn't deal with this, or let's say he goes to KL and he feels this sort of uh, anxiety again, um, what actually could I mean? What actually had to happen in order for Timothy to go like, oh, I really have to go and see uh, someone like a therapist or a psychologist or a counselor now. So what would be the signal for Timothy in his uh, case of, uh, you know, anxiety? Mm. So when we, we always say that, you know, when this distress have already impact or impaired yeah. our daily life functioning, that including our work, our, you know, appetite, our sleep, basically, you know, uh, our social um, circle, in a way, we started to isolate ourselves or so. Basically, avoidance, that's something yeah. when we need to be more aware. And it would be helpful if you seek for professional help because, you know, those things that I mentioned just now are the skills, but sometimes it's pretty hard for us to practice it by ourselves without guidance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. again, I always mention that, you know, going to therapy sessions, it's like going for tuition class. You learn some skills, you practice it together with your teacher, right like with your teacher and then once you know how to use it then it's time to say bye bye to your teacher right mm. so yes i always see it as that way because it's just like you know you go there the, your your therapist or your teacher in a way help you to identify what's the problem right what's the problem or what can you improve and then you learn some skills together practice the skills together once you know how to use those skills and then it's time to say bye bye yeah. And in brief, yeah. how, how would the session 
um, till now? Mm. Like, is it just talking or is there any other um, activities? Mm. Or right, whatever? right. Okay, so uh, it really depends on the clients, right? Some mm. clients, you know, sometimes if they prefer doing something more imaginary, more creative, then we can include um, some drawing or some magic uh, guided imagery sessions or else if uh, clients prefer to just talk um, using some you know sometimes we do like to um, write things on the paper or right now it's virtual so we will use a little bit of google docs to to show you some tables to to to, mm -hmm. to like write things down yes mm. to write things down clearer because sometimes we always you know think through our head and it gets messier because everything is on your head things is not very clear when everything's on your head. So that's why we we would like to write things down and then the client could see things clearly as clearer as well. So yeah, um, that's different, different types of approach, but usually we would uh, change accordingly to the client unless some therapists might have specialized in certain approach and that's the only approach that they would like to use that that's a different story or else it's it's always catered to the client so it's more about your preference just like you know mm -hmm. a student going to tuition if it's a one-to-one -one tuition you you won't teach the same style to every children right, right, right yeah, 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 so we yeah, use yeah. the methods that suits the children same goes to therapy i would say like that mm, that's the good I see. the best metaphor i think <laughs> yeah yeah very, very well put all right so um if timothy you're watching this um Basically, we are normally neutral, but then for this, we feel like you should really go for it, you know, try to uh, overcome your anxiety in order to have your career move forward. Uh, so if uh, Timothy needs any help, um, we do have some help helplines provided here where he can refer to you and also for all of our audience out there. All right, now that we are done with uh, Timothy, up next, we will have um, Jack, uh, Jake from Malacca, where he has a problem with women. My name is Jack from Malacca. I'm a 40-year-old man, and I am afraid to approach women. Previously, I've only had two girlfriends, and none of them end up in marriage. The last relationship was almost five years ago and I can't seem to move on and start a new one with anyone out there. I tend to get super nervous when I'm around new people, especially women. I would clam up and just shut down every time any of them starts talking to me. I would have sweaty palms and fail to make any sort of conversation. With the pandemic, I've tried chatting with women online. It's much more easier to do so as they can't really see me physically. Even though they have tried to engage in a video call, I would politely decline, as I still don't have the courage to speak with them as such, even if it's via a video call. People say that I'm just nervous and I have to get over it, one way or another. The problem is, I don't even know where to start. I really hope that I don't need any professional help like going to see a doctor to sure this thing that I have. How do I overcome this? I do want to get married someday, and I don't want to be lonely till I die. Dear Act Now, please tell me what to do. All right, um, thank you, Jake, for his uh, letter regarding this problem with a approaching woman where he finds it very difficult to deal with the loneliness that he has been facing now. I feel like it would be easier for me that we um segregate his issues into three different parts um first um what could be the reason that he is so afraid of uh, uh, approaching women and secondly how does he overcome this uh, fear of you know being around women in general and number three is it really necessary um, for one to actually have a partner in order to not feel lonely mm -hmm. i think there's a very big picture question that we might uh, actually at the end we might just you know just tell jake that actually maybe he has been focusing on the wrong side of his life that he thought 
having a girlfriend or a partner is everything in life. Mm. All right, so back to his problem, he actually said that um, it's not that he has been single since forever. He actually had two girlfriends before, where the last one was almost five years ago. But he doesn't seem, to, I think Bobby doesn't understand why can't he move on. And he tends to get super nervous. Does this have something to do with anxiety as well, uh, Miss Theory? Yeah, um, I would say that uh, there might be a few factors, right, when we talk about yeah. cannot move on. Because when we talk about cannot move on, um, there might be grief still lingering on. There might be, right? There might be uh-huh. grief still lingering on in the sense that there's no closure for the previous relationship. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so that might be a possible factor as well because we're not too sure when um, Jack mentioned could not move on, what does he mean, right? So that might be a possible factor. And if that's the reason, I would really encourage uh, Jack to um, process this grief, yeah? Make sense of it. Or if you really need a closure, um, you might even, if if that's okay, you might even want to, um, you know, uh, have ex. a conversation with yes with the ex to have a closure yeah but if not then you need to have your own rituals to to to, to have a closure for for these previous relationship so that might mm-hmm. be one factor um mm-hmm. another factor would then be um you know anxiety in the sense that maybe there's unpleasant uh breakup or unpleasant issues that happen uh, that cause him to fear of approaching women. Yeah, not too sure what the reason is, but there might be reasons such as fear of judgment. Um, perhaps might be due to um, lack of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Low self esteem. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So uh, these um, these kind of factors might also affect. Jack, and once again, I want to, you know, thanks Jack for sharing this with us because I believe that this is not busy, uh, easy and it's it's been with you for for uh, for quite some time and, and you really want 40 to... 40 years old now, yeah. Yeah, I really want to, you know, find find something to help you. Um, that's why, thank you so much for writing in. So, um, yeah, I would say that, you know, that might be a few factors, grief as well as anxiety. Yep, fear. Mm. So, um, you know, when we talk about fear, um, there might be this fear of judgment as well. And usually, um, we human beings really likes to uh, mind reading. Yeah, we likes to mind reading in the sense that we likes to assume how people look at us. And that's very, uh, that's might be helpful at certain situation. But it might not be helpful. Overdoing it is not healthy. <laughs> when we overdoing it, yeah, especially yeah. when you are trying to approach someone, you want to connect with someone, but there's this thing, thing, thinking keep popping up saying that you might be, you need to be careful, you know, because people might see you in this way. Oh, you cannot do this. Mm. People might see you in this way. That does causes to feel anxious then. And that's why we can see that Jack do experience some anxiety symptoms like um, sweaty palm, right? Because you're anxious. Again, this is related to seeing this as a threat because judgment is a threat, right? Mm-hmm. It, it does affect how people perceive us, our identity against is a threat. And then when threats happen, it activates our fight, flight, or freeze again. Yeah, that's why it's harder for you to approach or try to connect with someone because these thinking keep popping up Mm, if that's the case yeah because we are not very sure um um what's jack's case yes because um uh uh, jack did not elaborate it more and we couldn't have him here yeah (laughs) so so yes um that's the um the fear part of uh, the reason behind why he has problem approaching women. Is that what you want to say? Yes, yes. All right. Mind so, um, be- mm-hmm. factor. Mm. Before we go into the overcoming part, I noticed mm-hmm. that Jack mentioned, um, I really hope that I don't, don't need any professional help, such as going to see a doctor. 
Mm. In your opinion, based mm. on whatever that he has、uh, put forth here,、mm. do you think it is actually too premature to、um, advise him to see a doctor or therapist or psychologist?、Mm. Right.、Um, once again, I want to let、uh, Jack know that. Jack.、Mm. Right. I, I want to let. Uh, Jack, know that you know when we go to seeking professional helps, it's not really labeling you. It's more like you know helping you to、uh, or guiding you to identify、um, what needed help, right? Especially if this is something that you really want or you care about, and it has affect this aspect of your life, which is romantic relationship, then. It's not a bad thing for you to、um, approach professionals' helps or seek for professional helps because you know um, um, they might help you or guide you in learning some skills so that you can slowly、uh, approach women again if that's your main goal at the end of the day, right? So、uh, it's not about labeling or diagnosing you, but more like. Helping you to identify the reason, helping you to process, and then、uh, sharing with you some skills that you could use so that you can achieve your goal, which is to、um, approach someone and later on、um, go into a real romantic relationship.、Mm. Putting,、mm. um, I mean, putting aside the fact that he has to see a doctor, I'm pretty sure that. I think he is not very convinced by that yet. But then,、mm. um, for Miss Rui, what do you think? Do you have any solutions or I don't know suggestion when it comes to、uh, approaching women? Like any like particular tips that applies to all circumstances or situations? Hmm. Right. So again, when we talk about anxiety, if uh if Jack's case is about anxiety, fear. Either fear of judgment or so, right, or low self esteem. It's also still related、mm-hmm. to anxiety. And looking that、um, Jacks do experience some anxiety symptoms. Again, it will be the three、mm-hmm. same tips, which is you know we need to reduce our physiological response.、Um, we need to kind of like eliminate avoidance behavior as well, because I can、mm-hmm. see that um, um, Jack mentioned that she, he declined video call, right. So、yeah. that will be something that might need to work on as well, as well as、mm-hmm. um um you know reframing his thinking, especially if it's the mind reading thinking, thinking that people assume him or might see him in a bad way, yeah, or people might judge him. That would be things that he might、uh, want to work on as well, right? So when we talk about um rela- um. Reducing physiological symptoms, it would still be the same. Yeah, it's always going back to relaxation skills like deep breathing,、um, progressive muscle relaxation, yoga. As long as the skills do helps you to calm down and feel grounded. Yeah, and for eliminating your avoidance behavior. So again, we need to be aware what makes us want to avoid. What are we afraid of? This, yeah, because definitely we are afraid of the unpleasant feelings. Because once you approach someone, then you know all these、um, s- symptoms might be coming, right? Because it's pretty normal when we are anxious. That's when our our fight, flight, or freeze response is activated. So we will have that symptoms、yep. anyhow. So feel we need to learn to be. All right with that symptoms, sis. Yeah, be all right in the sense that、uh, knowing that it's normal, especially when it's someone new. It's you know even when we meet someone new, we might feel anxious a little bit. It's not the true self yet. We won't portray the true self yet yet because we are anxious as well, right, Desmond? Are you <laughs> anxious、mm. when we first meet each other, right? So so that's a little,、normal. a little.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. Maybe not as much, but everyone do have slight anxious or like, oh, what will happen? Yeah, like because it's uncertain. Yeah, yes, so it's、yes. pretty normal in the sense just that how can we regulate it to feel less anxious? Yeah, and that's when we need to use the relaxation skills. Yeah, deep breath and, is part of it. Correct, correct.、Mm-hmm. Yes, and and knowing and? that that's normal. 
And when we talk about eliminating um, avoidance behavior, uh, I'm very, very glad that um, Jack has tried to, you know, approaching or knowing, try to know someone through online. That's very good. Yeah. So you start from voice call, chat, and then voice call, and then slowly, you know, like shorter video call this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to try what we know as exposure. Yeah. And we want to do it gradually. So maybe, mm. you know, we want to do it gradually in the sense that uh, at first, you, if you are not comfortable with video call, then, you know, we start from small, which is, you know, chatting, voice call, and then, for, uh, for example, like three minutes kind of video call, and then five minutes, you know, and, and we might want to rate ourselves when I do the three mm. minutes kind of video call from zero to 10, how distressed am I, right? What uh, uh, physiological reaction do I have? So once, you know, you keep doing that three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, the anxiety would actually, the distress level would actually goes down. Maybe at first it will goes up, especially when you keep doing it, but later on it will goes down because you started to feel comfortable with it. Just like, I'm not too sure because I used to, you know, have anxiety when while I'm driving, but maybe guys don't have that. I'm not too sure, you know? So no, plenty of girls have that. To, well, like, huh? Yeah, maybe some of, some of you also have that. So basically, you know, when you think about when we are anxious about something, or even when you were younger, when you need to learn how to ride a bicycle, every one of us definitely have this fear, right? We, we are afraid that we will fall down. Just like we are afraid that we will fall down in a relationship as well, right? We are afraid. So definitely we have all these nervous energy, all these anxiety symptoms, but we need to keep exposed to this thing. And when you're exposed, you know, you keep driving, uh, you know, either driving or riding. At least you don't do like, you know, one hour straight lah, because that's not helpful. You you will just get more traumatized. You do something short yeah. first. Your dad, maybe your dad will hold you, right? When you're riding a bicycle, mm -hmm. your dad will hold you. Mm -hmm. And then he will, he will say that, okay, okay, daddy will hold you. And then so you don't feel as scared. So, you know, it's like chatting first, not as scared. So after, okay, daddy put one hand, just, just one hand. Uh, uh, so it's that like, you know, that's like voice call. And then slowly, like, they, uh, your daddy will not, you know, hold you anymore and you are riding a bicycle, mm -hmm. but not so long. Maybe just, let's say, uh, uh, how many centimeters oh, or meters? Uh, 100 meters. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yes, meter. yes. Yeah. And then longer and longer, right? That's how yeah. we do it. Gradually, so gradual improvement. Correct, correct. And it's normal that at first we will still feel anxious, yeah? At, at first, we'll feel still, still feel anxious. But, you know, once maybe you say that, okay, I think my anxiety or my distress is more manageable at level 5 or at level 6 mm -hmm. for you or even level 4. So, you keep doing the 3 minutes until you reach, uh, you know, the rate of 4. And then, okay, I reach uh, the rate of 4 already. So, I can go 5 minutes. So, you do it gradually according to your own um, distress level. Yeah, so you don't have to do something too big or that traumatize you first. And if you don't feel comfortable, you can at first, you know, uh, if, if, if it's a physical or a video call, you can at first, you know, like invite someone to go with you first. Maybe that doesn't cause you to feel as anxious. So you need to come up with kind of like a hierarchy, fear ladder. Yeah, fear hierarchy or fear ladder for you to expose things gradually. Yes. Mm. So right, that's the way that we can eliminate uh, avoidance behavior in a way. We do kind of like a fear ladder or fear hierarchy and then we we do things one by one. Yeah. Mm. So, so, so that's down the... the anxiety as well. Correct, correct. Right. And again, most most importantly would be then reframing our thinking, right? We we might not want to uh keep buying this mind reading thinking yeah because if you keep buying this mind reading thinking means that you are getting into it keep believing it it's not very helpful 
yeah, because you will just think that things will not go up well. Uh, besides mind reading, maybe catastrophizing thinking as well, because you will think that things will turn out badly. I will get anxious and I will not able to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So another way of trying to reframe this is actually try to visualize your success. Try to visualize that I can talk to a person, I can talk to a woman despite feeling anxious. Even though I might, you know, stutter a little bit. But Embrace your anxiety. <laughs> yes, but you need to visualize, oh, okay, when I come into this room or when I open my vi video call, oh, how will mm -hmm. I react? So you try to visualize it in your brain, just like athletes. Mm -hmm. Athletes do visualize how do they, you know, um, act during a competition, isn't it? So same mm -hmm. thing. So we visualize how do I act when I want to approach someone. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another way, Jack. Mm. Mm. And sometimes girls do appreciate when you are a little anxious because they might find it cute or something. So you never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, speaking yes. of uh, the last the last question, actually, I would like mm. to know that uh, what words of encouragement do you have for Jack? Because for me, I feel like um, in order to, I mean, instead of keep trying to find people to fill that void in you maybe jack should also focus on himself so what brief um brief you know words of encouragement do you have for him that it's okay to not find someone mm, all right right because we can see that um jack mentioned about loneliness right and and this is something that a lot of people do experience as well whether with partner or without partner <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um Yes, um, and, and we then would need to think, when we talk about loneliness, uh, we, we then need to think about what do we need? What are our needs? Because everyone has different needs. Some people might need um, appreciation. Some people might need um, intimacy, uh, either physical, uh, maybe physical intimacy, or some might need emotional intimacy in the sense that um, I, uh, I need someone to listen to me, for example, right? So we need to think about what's our needs first. That's the first step, yeah? Because everyone has different needs. And every, even like when you and your partner might have different needs as well, yeah? So everyone has different needs. So first, we need to identify what's our needs. The second one, we want to think about whether we can gain these needs from other parties, not necessary a uh, partner, but maybe friends, maybe family, maybe uh, a club, because some people might like to go to, I, I don't know, like bicycle club or um, some association that you're attending or volunteering friends, you know, or religion. Um, what else? Yeah, so Many basically, aspects, yeah. yes, yes, there's, you know, different, different people that we are meeting every day. So we want to think whether these other people could cater our needs, because sometimes if we think about, oh, I want someone to listen to me, it might not be your, uh, you know, romantic partner, but it can be your friends, right? Mm -hmm. Because your friends yeah. might understand you or validate you and you feel good about it. So we want to think who can cater these needs of ours. And if you think that, oh, actually, most of these, um, most of the people I know are able to cater these needs of mine, then maybe we do not require a romantic partner. But if you think that a romantic partner can, only can cater this need of yours, then that's something that you might want then, right? You might want to search for them. Yeah. And, you know, um, just want to let Jack know as well, when we talk about connection, I believe that it's always about uh, authentic. Yeah. Just being yourself, letting yourself shine. That's someone, that's something that people value. Yeah. It's not about, yeah. it's really not about what you want to portray. Of course, that can be, but at the end of the day, people connect with you because you're authentic. And people can sense when we are not authentic or not genuine. Yeah, people can sense it. So just be yourself. Let your true self shine. And I believe people can see that of yours. Yeah. 
could could would value that. Mm. That was, that was really really amazing, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Miss Sui, for your very very insightful advices. And I believe, uh, regardless it be uh, Jack or Timothy for today, they have definitely uh, you know you know gained a lot of benefits from this uh, sharing session, and also our audiences as well. And uh, once again, thank you so much, Miss Sui, for being with us tonight on our twelfth episode of the Act Now. Thank you so much, and we shall not disturb you any further. And I want to say goodbye to our audiences. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone, and have a good night. All the best to all of you. All right, thank Take care and stay safe. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Miss Hui. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. So um, that's it for today's episode. And once again, thank you so much if you have been um, staying tuned to our live show uh, every episode. And also, um, if you have any issues that be financial or uh, relationship or career stress and so on, feel free to email us at now at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to watch us live on Facebook at Act Now Trooper Facebook page every Monday at 9 p.m. So stay tuned and I'll see you again next Monday right here for the next episode so have a good night everyone and thank you for watching <laughs>